Hi, Shiv. Hi, hi, Raj. Sorry, sorry, guys. Sorry for the delay. There was a network issue. Uh, Shiv, I just I am telling to the people that okay. you are in uh, uh, Uti. Uh, yeah. I know that how much it is difficult in the internet connections in hill station like Uti. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, how are you, Shiv? Doing good, gentlemen. How are you? Yeah, doing good, Shiv. I am in Coimbatore now. Okay. Many people are joining with us. Okay. Many people are eagerly waiting for our uh, chat show. Sure, sure, sure. Even Joseph was with us for some time. Okay. Many people are there, sir. Okay, good, good. Nice to hear that. How is your family, sir? All are fine. All fine, gentlemen. How about you all? Uh, all sir, fine. I am in the. Uh, I am in Coimbatore now. I cannot okay. move my house. Even okay. I am staying in this room itself for last twenty-one oh. days. I am some uh, charity oh, okay. kind of. Okay, Shab, yeah, I came and I got stuck in Uti. I'm in here almost for more than a month. Got okay. stuck. <laughs> came for a project and finally ended up being over here. Shiv, anyhow, you are very busy with the farming work now, Shiv. <laughs> lot many, lot many. <laughs> Shiv, yeah. show the house, Shiv, the front, that your house. Yeah, I'll show yeah. my place. Wait, see, this is how the place will look like. See, <laughs> Shiv, it is a very so, nice, nice time you are being there. Yeah, you, this is how Uti Shiv, looks. In the right, in the right time, you are locked at locked down in a Uti, Shiv. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. And then, fine, sir. Then, how many days you will be in Uti? Don't know that. Uh, not sure. I'm not sure how many days. Maybe uh, until third or uh, I don't know. Something gets open before that. I might uh, live from here. Yeah. Hello. That is that decision is given to the government side. Yeah, yeah. It's all depending upon the government decision, not mine. <laughs> Fine, sure. Fine, sure. Fine. Sure. Um, yeah. Actually, no. Uh, you are from Uti, right? Yep. Actually, you are you are from uh, Uti born, sure. Uh, yes. Through profession, you have traveled all over our country, and finally, you have you have done many great culinary uh, what achievements in New York also. Can yeah. you please take us for a journey throughout the journey from Uti to uh, New York? Well. Uh... to tell about the my journey you know you very well know you know i am a hotel management graduate uh, once i got graduated i was with uh, taj as a management trainee in uh, mumbai so okay. once uh, after i completed that then i was with uh, hilton hilton in us then i was with piano cruises okay sure with uh, uh, ramada as a corporate chef and fnb director Mm -hmm. and i was also with uh, meridian and hilton again with hilton and meridian for some uh, few years all together a journey of uh, 21 years and worked under some uh, great chef started the career with uh, chef sanjay kapoor as my oh. <laughs> first executive chef yes. so after that i was uh, with many other chefs and uh, like chef hans ka gerald all in us and i spent most of my time with uh, Chefs from uh, friend, France, Italy, and Germany. Fine, so they were uh, hardcore chefs. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so that's how my journey was. When I was working in India, I was with Chef Sanjay Kapoor, and of course, I worked under even uh, Imtiaz Kuresi's uh, son. Yes, Kuresi. So yes, that's okay. where I learned a lot of Indian cuisine. Fine. So after that, when I moved abroad, when I was working with uh, uh, Hilton, I worked with Gerald, Chef Hans Kark. and so many other uh, popular chefs with great experience and perfections so it is it was tough but it was very interesting to learn a lot of things from this all uh, you know legends yes sir so so are you uh, what is your uh, uh, point in uh, working with uh, indian chef and with the international chefs like uh, now you worked with the usa also see so i would me, say get... yep Okay, please go ahead. Yeah, I would say, uh, you know, the difference is, uh, you know, it is. Not, I won't differentiate as Indian chefs or, uh, uh, you know, chefs from abroad. But the only thing is, when you work with the French chefs, the perfection matters a lot. It is not like because they all carry something called a Bible, which is a chef Bible, which has a classic recipes, 
which they don't never never ever deviate so if they want to cook a sauce with madira wine if madira wine is not there that sauce is not done simple as that if they want to use salmon fish if salmon is not available there is no compromise so that's how the french chefs whom i worked with but when it comes to indian cuisine i you know it all again depends upon chefs a lot of indian chefs are very perfect very a lot of perfections they do but uh, as we don't have a proper recipe or a classic recipe like every 30 kilometers you go in india the food taste varies a chicken makkani which is made in uh, chennai may not be the same as what is made in punjab and within chennai itself when you go from chennai to andhra it will differ that's why it, every 30 kilometers the taste differs and it all depends upon the chefs who are cooking so indian chefs in a they modulate the recipe as per the region whereas the foreign chefs they have a classic recipe which they follow other than the innovative and creative dishes what they do other than that whatever the classic recipe is perfectly followed by them whereas when it comes to india other than the master chefs who have really done this i don't think anyone else do the same kind of recipe unless in other ways we carry a recipe of their own even that there's a lot of variants because uh, it depends upon the regional uh, production also the growth and the vegetable which grows in different regions also matters a lot so when it comes to indian chefs of course you know we do little bit adjust here and there with the recipe but when you work with a foreign chef they work with the right ingredients and with right perfections that is one major uh, difference which i felt and they are very hardcore and they give well, a life it's not like working with indian chefs where indian chefs only do cooking not just with cooking you know they do lot many things in india but whereas there if you take as an executive chef he handles the entire brigade even he does cleaning lot of cleaning work he does but whereas in comes to india not all chefs do the cleaning work because we have in separate department to do that so that's also there okay chef you are telling that no the international chefs are, chefs are not uh, compromise with the things right Uh, exactly exactly they not so e- you know they don't compromise that easily and it's very difficult for them to get compromise because they that's why they follow the classic recipe which is already uh, like a bible so what is there in that they follow the exact thing with exact measurement with exact ingredients and that's how they do it whereas in india it varies there is chef you have told me told that that every 30 kilometers the cuisine is completely changing so i yeah. i think maybe the indian chefs also changing are co- getting compromise uh, like the cuisine maybe like what should yeah and that's what see as per the availability of ingredients they try to adjust the same see if they want to make a murgmakhni they make it as per uh, the region you know like you like how you make a chili chicken you know you go in uh, tamil nadu it will be a different taste you go to andhra it will be a different taste if you go to uh, uh you know mumbai it will be a different taste so it is not the same recipe which we follow we do little bit of modulation as per the availability of the local ingredient okay uh, chef oh, another one question how did yeah. you manage the two position like you no know, once you uh, come to india uh, yeah. you get into the club mahindra right chef there you worked for a few years as executive chef then you moved to ramada group there you yeah. uh, held the two position like the sous chef and the uh, what carpet sous chef and the fnb manager no yes. uh, how you 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 manage the two position chef <laughs> what is very what is it you know so that's a kind of transition period where i was elevated from an uh, uh, a, from an executive i i moved into as a corporate chef so once you work as a corporate chef it becomes very easy to handle the fnb because again it's all about seeing fnb again it is so closely knit you know it is not that easy for a fnb manager to become an executive chef whereas an executive chef or an corporate chef can very easily get into fnb because lot of things are related with food and beverage together once you know the calculations of the budget your uh, menu planning your costing and all these things then it becomes very easy for you to do the uh, fnb work and it's more of the budgeting and those things you need to learn a lot and you need to have a very good beverage knowledge especially when it comes to bar see this how i learned is when i was working abroad when i was with hilton i used to spend some of my time working in even in the beverage department there is a bar 
Okay, you know, okay. There's a bar and where I worked under a chef, uh, not a chef, an F&B manager called Malcolm. He's from Caribbean. So I would say he's one of my guru in F&B. So he's the one who taught me a lot of this F&B. That's, that's where I learned a lot about liquors and uh, how to handle a bar and F&B. Everything I learned from there. And it becomes very easy. See, once you have your good food knowledge and little bit, you know, all the costing and your... Uh, standard recipes and all this, then it becomes very easy for you to do the budgeting. So once you couple both this kitchen with the F&B, it becomes very easy to operate. And moreover, uh, see, as you work, as, in, as you handle both departments, it becomes more easy because you don't find much of conflict between uh, F&B and uh, kitchen. It becomes very easy to handle. Okay, sure. Fine. Fine. That you're telling, we should have uh, some basic idea about the beverages. So, exactly, exactly. Without beverage and budgeting, the costing part, especially when it comes to the budgeting, if you're not aware of the budgeting, it becomes very, very difficult because uh, every year for every menu, for every uh, occasions and uh, functions, you need to plan out a costing because end of the day, money, you know, okay. the F&B comes in money. It is a revenue department, you know, it is not. See, food production is you just do the production. You do only the cost control, but end of the day, F and V is the front line where they sell the product and make money for you. So you should also know the sales techniques. You should know how to do upselling. You should know how to suggest and sell products. You should know how to sell the uh, valuable product. You should learn the customer first. You should know how to uh, judge a customer, see whether they'll be capable of having this. And you should uh, know the value of the customer and you should be at a point of time, you very easily come to know how much you will be able to sell through your menu and who is the right customer through whom you can sell. So these Chef, are certain things we should learn. Okay. Chef, Joseph is asking on question. Uh, yeah. Master Roti, Chef Joseph. Dear Chef, yeah. when do we get standalone restaurant effectively? I mean, customer goes crazy with standalone. Yeah. Uh, uh, actually, can, you, can you repeat the question? Uh, dear chef, when do we get standalone restaurant effectively? I mean, restaurant uh, goes crazy with standalone. Uh, what he is meaning out there? Uh, <laughs> maybe I think he wants to know like uh, how to establish a standalone restaurant or how to uh, you know make it more profitability. That's what he means, I think. Right? I'm not able to understand the question. What it exactly means? You see, will stand. Okay, let me let me come to the, this question later, Chef. Chef, um, actually, no. You when we are talking y yesterday and today, uh, you told me that you are spending your days in uh, Uti in farming, Chef. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. That, you, know, uh, you you have some agriculture idea also, knowledge also. Uh, see, what it's again. Uh, see, this is the time when we can do a lot of things, in uh, because you you can explore. See, there are. Some childhood dreams, what you might be having and childhood experience, what you would be having. So, right. you know, this is it. See, we hardly get, see, after a wide gap of 21 to 22 years, I got this opportunity to be with the family together. <laughs> now only, right? in the, See, I would say after my education, after my uh, little man, once I joined the industry, it's almost 20, 21 years. Hardly we spend any occasions with family and yes, especially sure. for right. a long Maybe once in a while, you know, three days, two days, one day. It all depends. Again, you know, that, with so that much of tensions. Some tensions, sir. That also yeah, factors. That also with work tension, we work. You know, take our rest. But, now, you know, this is a period where we have enough of time to spend time with the family and do all our hobbies, whatever we have. When it comes to farming, it's so interesting. You know, and especially Uti, where you get everything, right? From avocado to broccoli i don't know how what is the rate of broccoli and those things which is selling out in other other places you won't believe here it is a kilo costs just 50 bucks okay okay, okay. <laughs> so it's quite interesting to do this kind of farming you know and you grow in your own garden and you take it out in it's it's quite interesting you cook out of it it gives a unique it, it's from your heart you do it so it's from farm to folk you do okay. it from yourself yes, yes. Yeah. No, you actually you are doing it. Really, you are doing it, chef. Actually, you are doing it. Well. <laughs> Usually, chefs are telling, uh, but orally they are telling, but actually you are doing it in practice. Chef. Now the thing is, I want to grow a lot of herbs. That is the reason. <laughs> and what is a place from where you get a lot of the herbs to, uh, especially in our industry. You know, we all get the herbs from Uti. 
and so that right, is right. one thing which i want to bring it up i had few but most of it was dead so again trying to regrow it who, who now who are under the house sir? me my Akash, wife sir. my son my sister okay. my brother in law my nephew <laughs> my niece is there her husband kid all are there so it's all being with families always fun so especially during this time when i start this uh, live chat i mentioned that you know when i came to kochi uh, last time yeah akka uh, had given me some uh, chips and some uh, munches to be that yes, i yes. came to my house and uh, given to my family members that i just okay. mentioned when the chat has started sir oh okay 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 chef okay. uh, another one question yeah you have climbed with many uh, culinary awards from the our reputed chefs bodies like yes, ifkan yes. south india chefs association yes, uh, yes also you are the uh, vice president for the young chef forum of indian federation of culinary association and uh, vice president for kerala chapter for sika south india chefs association yes, uh, yes. tell me uh, how you have entered into this association no uh, how you entered into this association how this association has benefited you and what this association are going to do for the younger generations because uh, you are doing more great things for the younger chefs uh, can you yes, please yes. Bit elaborate on that point chef yeah yeah i would say uh, well uh, when i was when after i came back from uh, us when i was working uh, when i joined club mahindra so that is the time when i got into uh, ifka that is sika south india chefs association Hmm. and uh, uh if ka also was there during that time so when i uh, came across certain functions because uh, i i used to come for some pre opening of some hotels and all i was getting involved in few of this uh, pre opening work so that is how uh, i got into ifka first so from Fine. ifka then uh, later on uh, you know when i moved to kerala uh, then i got involved with uh, sika and uh, chef sitaram then uh, the uh, ex president chef jugesh arora so jugesh arora chef was working in uh, uh, in kovalam that is in uh, kerala which so property chef working in uh, leela he was working for leela leela okay yeah. fine so that's how i got first connected with that then after that we had some training programs for which i got an invite and then uh, then uh, the sika was that time very well formed Okay, so once okay. we moved there, then I was given an opportunity to take a training over there. So once the training was done, then uh, gradually we got involved with so many other activities through Sika, uh, through competitions. Then they I used to come and participate in so many competitions when uh, Sika used to organize their uh, annual event. So once we uh, got into all that, then I, moreover I was in Kerala at that time. So that's how after this training and this competitions. then uh, you know i was put as a uh, uh, member in fact i was i joined as a member Remember. then i was as one of the uh, uh, you know driving team for sika so after the driving team then i was elevated as a uh, vp of uh, south india chefs association for okay. kerala chapter so that's how i got into that then after that you know uh, we got into so many other training programs where uh, even for wax i am accredited jury for Good by wax uh, world association of uh, chef society so in that also i was associated and I'm now still owning that one you know i go for various judging in uh, india and abroad you know, that i think you might be aware of yes 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 and uh, yeah and uh, you know chef rick stephen had uh, you know given that so many of us got in and uh, we are still as a jury and uh, we have very few chefs in south india who have accredited through wax that is yes. the world chefs association as an accredited jury That's so right, right. i am a big i am a b grade jury for uh, wax wax so after that then various other functions where we go as a juries and uh, many training programs many seminars as a sika owning and uh, vice president position we are uh, you know we always encourage uh, the uh, emerging chefs and the young chefs to come and get into this association because uh, we do conduct a lot of training programs for the uh, uh, industry because this is one thing uh, which will profit them in the future because not just about uh, being a member you get to learn a lot of things because uh, we conduct a lot of training programs and uh, even recently i think uh, chef rajmohan also was involved we all together really did a lot of programs in coimbatore then uh, in namakkal and many other places you know? 
So, you know, it really profits for the, the budding chefs. And uh, regional-wise also, we do a lot of programs. Apart from the competitions, what we have, we do have our uh, uh, training programs, training pro where we uh, go to the colleges and we teach a lot of things. And, uh, you know, few might be with a very, very minimal charge. It's only for the cost, but otherwise it's free of cost. In fact, uh, in Kerala, we have done many. We have done in Andhra, Telangana. We have done in uh, Karnataka. And apart from the annual competitions, what we have, there are so many other programs also we do through Sika. And sure. recently, sure. the Young Chefs Association, they want me to be a part of it. And uh, they've been forcing me to be a part of it. And that's how I told, okay, fine. Uh, and Chef Shabi is one of the... You are meaning, you're, you're meaning the India in IFCA, right, Chef? IFCA. Pardon me? You, yeah, it is a the part IFCA. of it is yes. a part of IFCA, but they've been forcing me to be as in uh, Young Chef Association uh, VP. But which I told uh, because I don't want to take in so many positions, so I just right. told them, okay, I can be a part of it. I can help them out, and but still, I think they put in me as an uh, Young Chef Association uh, Vice President as well. But I've, uh, you know, to help the Young Chef, definitely I am always there for it. No matter it is in India or anywhere. To bring up our profession, I'm always there with us. But I'm more actively in uh, South India Chef Association doing so many other programs as well. Chef, usually I, I, I think, so. whenever we come out some ideas, uh, some suggestions, that yeah. our our chef board is, especially our seeker is accepting that and encouraging the chefs to do the thing. So, exactly. no, uh, you are not stopping us. You are allowing yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. to go forward, Chef. This is the yes, real yes. reason we have done because myself and my team, Young Chef, has taken many initiatives to done previous events. Chef. That's uh, oh. I really uh, thankful and grateful to all the senior chefs here. In fact, we need to thank all of you uh, chefs, you know, as an Young Chefs, you know, as a great record holder. You know, you have taken a lot of initiative. I need to thank you as well and uh, Chef thank Joseph you. as well. You know, you have taken a lot of initiative in bringing up the SICA forum, the Young, young Chefs forum, you know, especially for the uh, college students. Yes, yes. The hotel management students, you have taken a lot of initiative conducting competitions and training class. And, uh, you know, that's how we can bring up our profession. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Chef, uh, another question that yeah. you, you, you always say is food is not just about taste. Food is yeah. not just about yeah. taste. Uh, yeah. You are very particular and imbo uh, giving importance to the presentation of the food. No, exactly. Please no, how the uh, uh, how the food is uh, the how the presentation is important for food more than the, more yeah, than the, the taste okay. is actually it should be there. But yeah. no, what about the feel of uh, presentation? Yeah, I would say. See, I would put it another way. See, we eat through eyes, right? right. The right. first thing what you see is the appeal. Mm -hmm. Correct. So Correct. when you see a food which is presented in a plate, if it is presented in a very unique and very attractive, you know, that itself will give you an automatic appeal. It will give you an appeal, uh, appetite. So I, sure. that's what I would say. We eat through eyes as a chef or as a customer. When they see, see when something is beautiful, first you look at it, right? Uh, then is what you explore on it. So when it is not really appealing, then you don't do that. You know, you, the first impression itself is get lost. So that's why I always tell, uh, eat through eyes first. That is the first appeal and the presentation matters a lot. Then, of course, the majority of the weightage has to be given for the taste. Right, okay. right. So cou right. The coupling both of this, the presentation and the taste matters in the food, especially in our industry. Without this both, see, doing something at home is different, Right. But when yes, you sir. give it to a guest in a hotel industry, when you're presenting in a plate for a, in the hospitality industry, the first thing is the appeal what we look at. So we, mm -hmm. we eat through eyes, then is the taste. So coupling this both will give you a perfection in your food, especially in presentation and uh, serving to a guest. Right, sure. right, right. Chef, uh, you are more, very much uh, particular about the latest trends and technologies and that yes, you are yes. ad adapting in your uh, uh, restaurant also. No, yes, but yes. I, my question is whether the, the guests are accepting that, the technologies and everything the guests are accepting, are the guests are accepting only that uh, uh, taste of food? 
watch you see i'll oh, say I... when it comes to india in a lot of guests uh, they would try to explore definitely they would try to explore something new see now you take off there is molecular gastronomy there is keto there is so many things you know blood revolution has come wheat revolution has come there's so many things which has come but these all are a trending one it comes it goes but there is something called standard which is called the desi recipe that is the mother taste like in a native okay. taste okay that stands always That's no matter right. how much our exploration we do whatever trending things we do when it comes to commercial it is not really viable mm. the standard one which stays is a, a, a traditional food with a perfect presentation this is what gives money but are they is doing lot of see i do lots you know but it's all a trending one it comes it might go it might fade off after sometimes you know vegan might stand for some time right vegan will keep on going but once now the kind of epidemic what has come so these are the times when things will go down it won't right. serve you any purpose vegan is not going to serve you neither is any molecular gastronomy or any keto food this is not going to help you out at this time the only thing which stays is the homely food right 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 so this is what always stays but learning as a hospitality industry professionals it is always good to learn about the new trends which is emerging then sure no matter whatever trend which is emerging in the industry it is always good to know because you can explore see because it's more like a food is all about a mix of science and i would say a little bit of chemistry food is always involved with some sort of chemistry so right, that's sir, how right. when we do lot of this molecular gastronomy we do lot of things with this we, we do with liquid nitrogen we do with lecithin we do with pepin so many things we do with to transform the food into a different shape yes. color texture all this so these are the trends we should definitely know but end of the day i would say it is a native traditional food which always stays then check that uh chef no uh, if the customer is come visiting your restaurant whether yeah. you will suggest your specialty dishes to the guest or uh, you will go with the like of the customers the choice of the customers see in the menu i do have all choices it is for traditional food it is for modern food it is for uh, you know even for kids all kind of food we have the choice is up to the guest to choose what they want but when we always suggest we would always suggest what the best we are giving what is the unique thing and what is the particular thing which we can really give 100% perfect quality to the guest that's what we would suggest and when it comes to a foreigners it 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 differs we would always try to sell our native food because a foreigner coming to india you know maybe once in a while he might try to have his food but when it comes to you know coming to another country it is always good to sell a native food so that's how i sell my food to the foreigners when they come so i would try to sell more of our traditional food to the foreigners Foreign, when so. our yeah when our indian comes to our restaurant you know we we do the other way we would like them to explore something which is not available in the market and which is there in my restaurant which is that unique thing which i want to sell we would always suggest that thank you so chef. that's how we do right right chef uh, now we are coming coming to the very important point about your restaurant yeah. be at bay yeah. uh, yeah. be at bay uh, chef yeah. uh, you have you have position with the very great uh, what position the hotels okay yeah. uh, you have earned very lump sum amount every month after yeah. you come to the uh, entrepreneur venture it is a yeah. really it is a what uh, no we we could not imagine i know that how much uh, hardships are there to take the entrepreneurship venture yeah. now how to come forward and how it happens chef this be at bay how it happens sir. how you take this uh, this this decision to come to the entrepreneur venture see uh, at a point of time see uh, you have certain dreams with you right at the end of the day you work no matter you work for how long you need to okay. do something of your own otherwise you keep working for someone for their dreams not for your dreams right, right. you always work for someone else's dreams so once you gain your enough foundation your base your set your well experienced then you can always take a challenge 
you always take a challenge once you have that kind of knowledge and when you're capable that you can okay overcome all this then you take up the challenge and you put up your own business but it is not that easy you know doing being an entrepreneur is never never easy you face in lot of challenges a simple example sir because of this epidemic see now the restaurant is locked down yes. staff sir they how are you going to pay we had to shell it out from your pocket right <laughs> so this are the, oh, these are the how many staff how many staffs are there now i uh, know right now i have uh, seven but all have uh, gone home in fact i was oh, about to recruit some more but yes, by yes. the time all this came and uh, you know right now it's only seven of them <laughs> and including me eight i am also a staff yes so yes, including yes. me i am also eight so we okay. all work together so you are telling it is a dream right no once we get the base yeah, founding it is a dream see uh, that's what as i told you see we always work for someone else dreams so once mm-hmm. you gain enough experience you are naturally you know you'll be having your own dreams to do something of your own it is not that just about restaurant see there are you know now profession you very well know see there are chefs who wants to become a tv celebrities there are some entrepreneur chefs there are some master chefs there are some journalist chefs so it, certain dreams will be there so for me it was like okay why not i take it up and uh, start my own because I, i do a lot of creative things which i felt that okay let why not i try do it in my restaurant and sell to the guest put up our own idea and sell it to the guest chef uh, i have seen your menu also whenever you are posting in your social media pages i will go through your menu your yeah. menu all the menus are pivotal menu that you have the south indian dishes and uh, that you know uh, some indian dishes and uh, your fusion dishes uh, everything will be there can you list out some specialty that uh, uh, dishes uh, in in your menu in any some dishes yeah see now uh, apart from the regional things what i am giving see i have some fusions there are certain fusions which i have done like uh, you know you would uh, you know because the restaurant is in kerala and the poliche is very famous over there poliche yes yes but poliche is always made with fish mm-hmm. but here what i've done is i made something which is with uh, chicken as well and especially with chicken tikka chef uh, the thing is no um, i i also want, want i i also asked about the vairam biryani vairam biryani from your restaurant yes yes yeah yeah, so, yeah. what is that chef see, actually see vairam biryani is uh, In fact, uh, Vairam is a person who has been working with me for quite some time. He's an excellent oh. South Indian chef. Uh-huh. He doesn't have any education. He okay. started uh, actually. He was working in a construction when I was uh, the pre-opening team for this Ramada. He used to come and make food for us. This boy. Oh. This boy oh. is from a place called uh, uh, Tenkasi. Oh, Tenkasi. <laughs> He's a very small close boy. To, close to my place. Yeah, close to your place. Huh? So yes. he used to work there. and i took i uh, you know i found this guy to be very interested he's from a very poor background so i found him to be very interesting in this field so when he was working he was making food and giving for the uh, construction staffs so i took him and i put him in cafeteria trained him and brought yeah. him and made him uh, you know bit educated also through ihm there's a hsr hunar uh, rozgar yojana that program also i, I sent him and got him educated and took him and finally i put him in my main kitchen as a south indian uh, trainee yeah. brought him up and finally at a point of time he was well known for his biryani oh, because yeah. he makes the biryani which is a blend of a tamil nadu and kerala mix Super and that sweet. is a very unique biryani which no one else makes it and that's why i named in this i gave the name of his own you know his name is vairam vairamuthu his name is okay so i gave the name of the biryani as vairam biryani Actually, so it's quite popular it's quite popular you are telling, you are telling that that biryani uh, the style of biryani is from his own style right his own preparation style now uh, yeah. in fact we did a lot of modification i we did a lot of modification it is in, in fact a blend of kerala and tamil nadu it's a blend of both so it gives a very unique uh, taste right chef so right chef so another one more uh, very important question that no many of them are asking this question to us uh, yeah. how about, how about the comeback of hospitality industry culinary industry uh, after this uh, covid 19 affection what is your your point, your point of yeah. view see from my point of view i would say it is really going to be a challenge it's all the people's mindset which has to change you know because uh, 
I'm sure it will pick up. It's not that it won't pick up. It is a matter of time. It's going to be a slow pick up. No matter how you market, you know, people's mindset has to be changed. You know, they should not feel that, okay, going to the restaurant, this might happen, that might happen. Because we, as an Indians, we always have a lot of might within us. So that mindset has to be changed, but it's going to be really challenged, very, very challenged. That is no doubt about it. So again, we have to face it. No other option. <laughs> we have to do it. Post uh, COVID, it is going to be a slow pickup. That is what I guess. I don't think it will uh, sudden or within one month or two months. I don't think the industry is going to boost. It's going to take some time. It might take yes. at least nothing less than uh, uh, a year to really come back. So, I don't uh, think that before <laughs> that it is going to pick up because. And moreover, uh, it's you know the people who have uh, you know the people who have uh, staffs, especially who have gone back, to come back and get set with the same flow, with the same momentum. It is going to take a lot of time. So it is really challenging. I would say nothing before six months, we can think of a smooth sail. Not uh, in the certain areas, definitely more than a year. It is real challenge, no doubt about it. Actually, this COVID-19 has given a very great effect to our hospital industry. Am I right, sir? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> because, you know, people's might because the foreigners' flow has become very less, especially uh, in a region like where I'm having the restaurants, the foreigners' flows are more. So because of this now, definitely, you know, they, you know the money is all, you know, all are going through a lot of uh, crisis. So the spending will be very, very less of people. Less. At least for the next... This is going to affect for at least for the next two years. Definitely the spending capacity of the guests is going to get reduced and the foreign travel will drastically get reduced. So sure. once this is getting reduced, then obviously the it, it is again all net. You know, everywhere it is linked. So if the guest doesn't come to the hotel, we don't, the restaurant doesn't do business. If they don't come to a tourist place, it's going to. So the foreigners are the people who, re but now the Indians do spend a lot of travel and uh, on travel and uh, eating. But again, um, certain regions, especially the Kerala and all this uh, tourism place like Uti, Kerala, Goa and all this place, definitely there is going to be a big impact. There's going to be a great dip of uh, foreign tourists. Chef, so another, another thing. Okay, yeah. Chef, uh, final question to you, Chef. Uh, yeah, yeah. That about the manpower, so uh, usually for the uh, even for the students or for the uh, what uh, senior people also having the uh, might with that um, starting a career in the restaurant will not give you uh, what uh, uh, will not add it to his future prospectors. Okay. Like uh, okay. uh, they, they are all thinking that you no know, make their entry into the hotel industry rather yeah. than entry to the restaurant. If you go to the European countries, people are more. Uh, what uh, um, giving the importance to give get into the entry to the restaurant chef. This yeah. kind of thing, when it, here it will change. Sir. See, it is again, uh, you know, they look at the big structure, nothing more than that. <laughs> because mm -hmm. they working for big brands like uh, Hilton, Meridian mm -hmm. and all this, they see the bigger hotels, wherein they go, they work as a trainee, they get to do only the basic job, they end up doing and it takes long time for them to come up to a higher level. But when it comes to the restaurant, they they get to do a lot of multi, multi jobs. They do all kind of jobs. Even if you're new entry, you get to learn a lot of things. So if you really want to become a specialized chef in certain cuisines, you know, you choose a restaurant. Mm -hmm. right? Because see, the, the restaurants, it's all specialty restaurants. You, the Indian restaurants are the South Indian restaurants, Chinese. So you want to specialize in one particular cuisine. Then you get into the restaurant. It becomes very easy for you to grow. Whereas you go to a uh, five-star hotel and you work, you get to do a lot of other departments. But uh, as a specialization to come up, it will take a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And this might definitely, uh, in India, it is a, as you told rightly, in India, people they always want to go and work in five-star hotels rather than working in restaurants. But in abroad, <laughs> definitely everyone wants to go and work in the restaurant first. Then they want to come up in that, in that same thing so that they can start something of their own. But in India, it doesn't happen. See, if someone wants to become an entrepreneur, working in a restaurant is the ideal thing because you get to learn everything. 
how to operate a restaurant right from the costing from the basics cleanliness to everything you get to learn but when you go to the hotel you will learn but it will take a very long time but after right. that when you want to do something of your own as a restaurant it is really challenging right sir right uh, so and moreover it is again the parents who also do this you know because it's always a pride in india if you yes, tell i am working for a no matter you work right. as a trainee but you always go and tell us and i am working for hilton it is a pride but if you the same way if you will go and say that i am working for an anjapur or you are working for a some other restaurant it is a very very high position also but there is no respect respect but uh, when it comes to earnings again uh, restaurant pays more than the hotels 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 right sir. yeah okay now uh, sir uh, yeah question for us uh, yeah venkat wait sir anand that he is asking us exotic exotic food sir good or bad exotic food in the means see exotic means what does he mean a particular uh, see you can call any food as an exotic food exotic okay other than the traditional any exotic you make out of any exotic uh, ingredient and unique or exotic ingredient is always good i won't say it is not bad it is always good but good. what exactly he means by exotic is it about uh, the present situation what is going on where that exotic or that kind of food what he means or anything else i am not able to get that point but exotic food is always good nothing wrong with it provided it is done with proper hygiene and the exotic should be an edible one it's not that you know you do something with uh, which is not edible and you do an exotic food then it doesn't value sir there is a sri geetanjali she is asking yes. you uh, yeah, what yeah, yeah. what new did in quarantine day? i think you <laughs> made the barbecue you hope yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i know i know who is she <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> she is she she is my niece in fact <laughs> okay okay, okay. Yeah. you know she i know she very well knows i made a barbecue you know barbecue uh, this it is it is out of all waste material it's all out of waste material uh, it is uh, nothing new it is nothing uh, with whatever left over all this crap material i had made a barbecue okay 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 so <laughs> I, that's what i had put in that uh, i think in insta only i put it yes, so yes, chefs not just innovate or uh, do creative dishes we also do fabrication nice chef chef very great time with you and i that's think we had we, we had had the chat for last uh, one and a half hours more that's the yeah, reason yeah. this connected chef last time yeah yeah and uh, chef joseph had asked some question you told which i didn't get it if you can just uh, uh, specify it uh, chef chef joseph's question chef joseph Uh, chef actually he has asked the question in the last video conversation chef oh, okay okay so we have to is disconnect he, is he still there joseph is still online joseph is not there chef not there joseph, right joseph joseph are you know. there no chef he is not there here he is not there right yes yes okay okay maybe you can tell him to text me i'll speak to him otherwise you can tell him to give me a call i'll sure sure so i can help ask him to give you a call chef chef yeah. actually uh, we, we are planning to go with this kind of uh, chat for next 10 to 15 days sir certainly yes, certainly we'll do it actually no we are meeting different people every day we will have okay. a uh, what a, a, a subjective interaction that will be very helpful for the individual as well for the followers also sir okay okay it's pleasure it's pleasure you know let's take it forward so any any other uh, thing which you want to know you can always let me know yep. maybe in yep. the next chat we can catch up then definitely sir definitely sir Uh, please have a great time with your family and as you yeah. told you, you got the very great uh, times now yeah uh, through quarantine yeah. you got the time. Uh? <laughs> true 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 okay sir sure. we'll meet oh. very soon hmm? thanks nice. thanks thanks raj and all the thanks best for... and be safe all of you be safe you know please don't go out or uh, get yourself put into all this trouble be safe and uh, have a long life Wait. Mm. Okay, sure. Yeah. Wait, sure. Wait. 
Hi Joseph. Joseph, are you there? He's, he's Joseph, what is your question, Joseph? Joseph, what is your question? You are asking about something about standalone restaurant. What you are meaning about? And the question, what is that? The what question, Joseph? Tell me, Mudima. Type and test, Panya, Ojja. Text, Panya, Joseph. So, after that, and the wood, you have to allah cutting, Joseph. How are you doing? Ah, in fact, it's become dark. You know, cutting. Dark, Ojja. Dark, dark, wood, Ipo. Actually, this is the area, Joseph. Actually, which area is this? This is one place called Arvangkar. Okay. It is in proper wood, Joseph. This is. Ah. in a uh, from here it is a proper uti kada it is down from uti it's on the way to uti on the way in the sense uh, not very far very close by only see this is a uti okay okay so uh, joseph is giving the what uh, the test that when do we get stand alone restaurant effectively i mean the culture of hero culture of europe okay unless get... the people unless the people's mindset doesn't change this is going to take a very very long time because an european mindset is totally different from a uh, indian mindset so in europe uh, your customers are uh, feeling very prestigious prestigious to go and eat the food in the restaurant chef in the chef yes, yes. yeah they want to interact with the chef as well as they want to uh, re- uh, taste the food also they most yeah. giving the Tends to go to the restaurants only more than the yes hotels. yes yeah yeah see the But, eating eating culture in India has you know come up only after the IT boom after the IT boom has come only the eating culture has come and uh, now I would say see compared to the past uh, you know ten years you know I think now the trend is almost you see an average family at least twice in a metro city goes to the restaurant. so that's how the trend has come mm-hmm. you know there are places where uh, the you know before we used to always take tiffin for the lunch but now that culture has changed so it's changing it's not that it's not changing but to come up with this 100% if you want say 100% but at least to some extent of this european or this us culture it is going to take some more time but i am i'm sure it is not going to take much time it is already getting changed things are getting changed see like in uh, singapore if you go they build the uh, apartments where you know the least importance is given for the kitchen area the oh. simple concept is because they want them to go and eat in the restaurant mm. they want to be more productive in their work so not spending much time on cooking mm-hmm. right but in india we build with vast kitchens so we try to explore so many things because that's our culture that's how it is but now things are changing you know people have already started coming out and eating out is becoming a culture now i think it is in a way near future definitely things are going to change as i told you the, compared to the uh, last 10 years now i am sure at least now there is an increase of 30 to 35% of uh, you know eat outs you know but that's why the lot of restaurants have been open now otherwise you know people would not have opened so many restaurants Aisha. the trend is not changing they would have not opened up so many restaurants a lot of stand alone restaurants which is coming up now sir uh, joseph also asking the same thing only sir i just want to know when do we get customer who just come only for the chefs and food like french laundry okay okay see this is a, this is a good question see and this unless and otherwise a chef is getting established you know when a chef is get, getting established in the market and he has to have that iconic dishes on his name like how this uh, michelin chefs own the restaurants so i go for this particular see now you go to a particular restaurant for that particular dish made by by that particular chefs so that brand brand entity is very very important the chef creating that brand entity for that particular dish is very important so once you create that particular dish on that chef so the guest automatically will come i go there because i will get this from the chef mm-hmm. and it is not just right. about that right. see as a chef you know we need to be 
little bit flexible towards the guest also because not every guest will have what you would wish to give there are some flexibility of some chefs also where it the guest would request with certain uh, ingredients and this so they wanted so that right. flexibility if that flexibility is not there then the guest may not come to you so it is either you have your own iconic dish on the chef's name for which the guest comes or you have to be flexible with the guest so that you give as per what you want so this too will always bring you the customer the guest will always want to come for these things right sir right sir what is it yeah. hope joseph got joseph got the things sir he mentioned the thing. thank you okay, okay. and you any thumbs up okay 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 sir uh, okay thank you sir thank you for your yeah. time yeah thanks thanks uh, raj this pass the regards to your family Certainly, certainly, Raj. I shall do that. You also take care and all be safe. Sure, sure, yeah? sure. Okay, fine. Uh, Cruet set and the customer have to eat. Cruet set. Uh, when do we? Well, do not have a cruet set, uh, and the customer have to eat what the chefs give. When do we get that uh, strong inside India? <laughs> That's a very good question, Joseph. See. <laughs> here we have been uh, you know we indians are known for our hospitality we go extra mile whereas in abroad it's not like that you know what you get what they give they eat and go and they price for it but here they don't value the the chef profession is getting into that popularity in the reason uh, ten i would say in the next past 10 years only we are getting into this one so now the trend gradually we the people have to change this trend and say the guest okay this is how the things are going to be but as it rightly told you know when a guest goes to the restaurant you know they prefer this all has to be in the table because that is how they portrayed in movies they have shown in uh, you know maybe in those days when we go to the restaurant this is how they used to show it with all proper proper setup of the cruet set and everything but the, the things can always change you know you set up a modern restaurant with a, a different theme or a different uh, setup people will accept it's not that they want accept it's a matter of time it's a matter of time that's it so we can always change that chef thank you for your sharing thank you for yeah. your time sir yes yes uh, yes sure we'll meet very soon uh, directly certainly certainly we shall catch up yeah thank you chef thank you for okay, you okay okay rajan thanks everyone take care Good have day. a safe day, safe living please don't go out be careful and uh, stay safe thank you all